Well, hey there, friends. So this video is really more of a show and tell than most things I do, and it's probably more intended for just curiosity and nerdiness and maybe even a little relaxation. The decks that I'm going to show in this video are not the easiest to find, and, and they are, I think, kind of, uh, not kind of, they are universally out of print, but they have come into my collection recently in two cases through really generous gifts from folks that I met at the Reader Studio and just, you know, in chatting and, and various things that happened, they, they arrived in my life. And then in one of them, I actually bought. And it was just sort of an impulse in tarot history. So I thought, you know, it would be fun to show you these decks and look at them a little bit and talk about them a little bit. But if, if like me, you are a uh, hungry consumer, a thirsty tarot, <laughs> a thirsty tarot, um, hunter, then, uh, this may be frustrating. So this would be a good opportunity for you to, uh, stop. But if you just like watching walkthroughs for the sake of watching walkthroughs, then this may be a little fun. And so we will have fun together. <laughs> so the three decks that I have to look at tonight are, uh, the tarot, the puppet tarot. This is an Il, uh, uh, Il Minigillo. I can never say that elegantly. It's an Il Minigillo deck from the 70s that I purchased, uh, actually from Arnel Ando, who I talked about in the previous video about the Tarot Folarcos. And, uh, that's actually how that deck came into my life, was because I contacted her about this. She was, uh, sort of, uh, dispositioning some decks that, uh, she was, she was moving on from. And so this is one. And then the next one is the Tarot Madoni, which is a deck that I have actually wanted for a long time and worried that maybe I wouldn't love because of the way the pips work, but actually it turns out I really do. And I'll talk more about that in a sec. And then the final one is the Pomo Tarot by Brian Williams, who passed away, oh gosh, maybe 15 years ago, I can't quite remember. But about the time I was starting to read, around 1998, 1997, he was kind of a preeminent, not kind of, I hate that I say that all the time. He was a preeminent deck creator, and he has a handful of decks that uh, were available in the late 90s, early 2000s, some of them are still available. In fact, I think one that is sort of widely still available is a Minkiati deck, which comes with a book that is probably useful to anyone who wants to read with a Minkiati. And it's been on my list for a while, and I've never really pulled the trigger. But I did have one of his decks a long time ago, and there were maybe three or four now highly sought after after highly sought after highly sought after tarot decks that I had when they were new that I sort of stupidly disposed of <laughs> without much thought the Victoria Regina is one Buckland's Romany is another and I think it was the ship of fools I can't I can't entirely remember which one it was but I had a Brian Williams deck that's now sort of popular and hard to get a hold of and uh no longer have it. <laughs> so let's look at the Madoni first because it was the first one that arrived. And I'm going to zoom in. So here's the story of, of my relationship with this deck, which is that I saw the tower card in this deck in my very first tarot book. I have a video about that book. And I loved the tarot, the tower card. It is, and, and I'll make sure to show it to you. It's really rad. <laughs> I mean, that's all about, that's about all there is to it. And, but, you know, back then I didn't, I, well, first of all, it was 1998, 1997. Like there, there weren't the internet resources that we have today. So, and I, I don't even remember thinking to look in the book about what the name of the deck was. 
years went by and I finally, you know, remember seeing it again and asking folks in a tarot forum online, hey, what's the name of this deck? And they were like, oh, it's Tarot Madoni, um, but uh, it's a Pip deck, sigh. And I was like, oh, fuck, I hate Pip decks. Like, who reads with those assholes? And then years went by and years went by, and then, like, I became the preeminent, well, that's arrogant, among the preeminent assholes who read Pip decks. <laughs> so, but this is a unique pip deck in that it's 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 among the pippiest of pip decks because each of the pips is really just the number and a very simple uh, suit drawing. There's only one of each one and then the number. So it's even even you know for folks who find Marseille kind of boring, <laughs> they'll likely find this even more. But the art style I love so much, and I've done a bunch of readings with this deck including for the wonderful soul who gave it to me. And I found it reads really well. And I, there are times where I want to sink into a really complex deck. And then there are other times where like simple, clear, fast is, is what I'm after. And so, you know, it's just about fine. It's about picking the right deck at the right moment. Right. So I'm going to just sort of talk about this one. Now this is out of print. This may be among the easier to get, um, it comes with a little white book. I mean, really, really just sort of beautiful. This was a Grimaud deck, and uh, I love the art style. As has been pointed out by friends, you know, it is entirely white people and probably would be among the more sought after of, of out-of-print decks if it weren't. But, you know, by that standard, so many of the decks, you know, so uh, here's here's the deck. It has these beautiful, simple, gorgeous backs. And it has a very, you know, of the decks that uh, I, I've shown over the years, this has a feeling of, for example, the uh, Parpolka, the Mars Tower de Marseille Parpolka. And similarly, sort of, uh, you know, sl uh, oh, the Terre Noir, the Terre Noir, those sort of Frenchish decks that have kind of a like slightly, well, Parpolka is a, not slightly, but and there's a um, a slight or you know powerful uh, wonkiness to it that's very, it's just otherworldly. Anyway. So, um, beautiful, beautiful deck that I, I have wanted for a long time. So here's what the pips look like. It's, if you have a wand, you have this wand and then the number. And so, you know, it, it makes us nervous as tarot readers to have just that. And as art appreciators to say, oh, that's it. But I have a few decks that do this and I like them. And, you know, I remember on one of my videos on pip cards, someone commented well you know by that standard you 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 wouldn't even need cards you know you could use whatever and actually you could use whatever you know if you if you were in an airport and you had a stack of index cards and someone needed a reading you could just write the name of each card and and do a reading and and probably get the same results because the art matters but it's not the only thing that matters and so, you know, it's, you don't want to, you don't want to, you don't have to be afraid of that. We appreciate beautiful tarot decks because they're beautiful, but that doesn't, that's not tarot. That's, that's part of it, but it's not the exclusive or totality of, of tarot. So here's the tower. This is the card that I had initially seen and I, I really love it still. And it has a, a very old fashioned French title, La Maison Dieu, for the tower. I won't do a, a flip through of the whole deck because, you know, it, it, it is a pip deck and these are the full measure of the pips, but it's just fun and I really like it. And I've done a lot of readings with it. Well, a lot's a relative term, but I've done a fair amount of readings with it and I love the way it reads and, and it's clear and sharp and precise, which is something that I really appreciate about pip decks. So, um, and I just love the art style. It's, it's, just yummy, you know? I mean, that's about the only way I know how to say it. It's it's tasty and yummy and uh <laughs> and and 
very French in its way, which, you know, is, is part of my genealogical heritage. And um, the lovers. So good. So original and different. I, I bet this deck would have been far more popular and might even still be in print if it weren't a pip deck and if the pip, even, or if the pips had been more elaborate than this. But again, there is something very, very satisfying and clear about having something so simple. So uh, I love it a lot, and I'm really happy to have it. And I thought, you know, when it was offered to me, I said, yeah, I really want that deck. I've wanted it for a long time, and, like, it'll be a nice collectible. I wasn't sure whether I would use it because of the thing that probably keeps a lot of people from it. But I use it frequently it's it's one that i reach for a lot and uh i really really think it's fantastic so that's that all right let's uh put this aside you know well let's you know lay some out why not <clears throat> It shuffles really well. I mean, it's it's mass market cardstock, but for a deck that's you know as as sort of <laughs> there's really nothing about shuffling easy about shuffling around a camera. So yeah, I mean, this is a deck that really emphasizes the number and the suit and and then the trumps. Look at this hermit. It's like rolled dull as Kermit. I think it's great. One of the things that I appreciate as a reader is being able to see very quickly what I'm looking at, and that's absolutely the case with this. This is the Seven of Cups, Five of Swords, Page of Money, um, and I think that that is super helpful. So I love this deck. I'm so happy that it has arrived in the collection. So I'm going to put that aside. Let's get the Pomo now. So this is the Pomo Tarot. It's postmodern. Whoops. So again, Brian Williams. I talked about. Um, I don't. I don't, honestly don't know how hard to find this is, uh, but uh, it, it, it's cool. It's very different. Um, has some of the worst cardstock ever, but that doesn't really matter to me because it charms me. Again, it's another very white, white, white deck. At the same time, it's also a very queer deck, which, you know, is not perfect, but it, it, it does speak for its, you know, it has something, something, there's something to be said for that, because there aren't a lot of decks that sort of successfully are, are queer. Now, a lot of the cards have been renamed, and uh, so I'll, I'll talk about that, I, but I love it. Uh, I haven't used it yet, uh, but I will. <laughs> so this is the expert it would be the magician there's a book i haven't read yet here's uh mona which would really be the high priestess so it's it's sort of a riff on art and modern culture and postmodern thinking etc so we have mommy and daddy and <laughs> mr religion i really love this lover's card this this is a deck that's really interesting because it's kind of tongue-in-cheek but also there's reality to it this isn't just tongue-in-cheek wheels and it's not a pip deck just as hurts uh <laughs> so here's our hermit out of it it's 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 witty in its way wheel of fortune but it's it's also artistically really charming All hung up. Dead. Neither here nor there, but right on the money. That would be temperance. Evil. Disaster. Sweetness and starlight. So it, it nods its head to tarot and at the same time sort of winks at it. Day. The end. The world. And so the suits are different. So the suit of, I think if I remember correctly, the suit of wands is TVs. Uh, I think. It's like a Dolly reference. A Picasso reference. So the, the cards sort of nod to art. 
of recent years, the seven of TVs, eight of TVs, and modern life, or at least modern life at the time that this was made. TV girl, TV boy, TV woman, it's Whistler. TV man, I think that's Magritte. The Ace of Bottles would be Cups. <laughs> Four. Five. There's Andy Warhol. Six. Seven. Eight. That, I don't remember who the artist is, but it certainly reminds me of the opening credits from Cheers. Nine. Ten. Bottle Girl. Bottle Boy. Bottle Woman. Bottle Man. Guns is Swords. <laughs> so I'm I'm a fan in its way. It's 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 a collector, you know, it's a collectible. Uh but I probably would read with this, you know, just particularly for like Instagram or Facebook. Uh uh, uh, monk Elvis Gunman, and then money is coins appropriately. Two, three, four, five. Picasso. Seven. Eight. American Gothic. Nine. Ten. Uh, Sarah. Money Boy. Money Woman. And Money Man. All right, so beautiful. I'm a fan. Really, I mean, this cardstock is so thin. It's really, like, super thin. But, uh, I think, you know, I haven't shuffled it yet because I wanted to do this video, but I think, you know, I think it can shuffle fairly well. And there is a guidebook, which, you know, you can... Uh, boxes. Tuck boxes. Really shameful and really sinful. Tuck boxes, I think. Among the Seven Deadly Sins. All right, so this one I have not looked at. This is Tarocco della Calizioni. I don't speak Italian, um, <laughs> but it's the tarot puppets. It's a, a Il Minogello deck from the seventies again, uh, out of print and uh, unique. Given its age and its European provenance, I have not looked at this too closely, but I would not be surprised if we have some problematic racial moments here. <clears throat> so be prepared. Uh, this came in the other day, and I haven't really had a time to look for it. So of the three, this is my first impressions, but this was 92 of 500. Um, it is a puppet-themed, slightly theatrical tarot deck, and I think, if I remember correctly... Uh, not unlike the Madoni, uh, in that the pips are a, a, a single symbol repeated uh, singularly and then with the number. So here's the Il Mato. Il Baghetto. So bad, right? La Papesa. Love this. Cardstock's interesting. The front is um, sort of cardstocky and 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 not glossy, but uh, satin. And the back is completely matte and unlaminated. Beautiful, simple green as the back. Can I zoom in? A scotch more. Lampetrisse. The Emperor. Il Papa. <laughs> the lover. Il caro. Uh, that would be the chariot. Justice. The really buff hermit. Wheel of Fortune. Really beautiful, isn't it? La Forza. Uh, the hanged man. Perfectly 
appropriate for a puppet deck, isn't it? A, a man hanging from a string. La Morte. Temperance. That's not really very puppety, is it? Il Diablo. <laughs> Ah, uh, this looks like a puppet stage with the tower. How cool. I love that. The star. Oh, what a forlorn-looking little harlequin there. La luna. Il sole. The angel. Judgment. Il mundo, the world. And so the pips are... Oh, here's the thing. Oh, this is this would be also the... Bastoni, there was to be the Ace of Wands, Two of Wands. Yeah, so you can, it's it's very like the Madoni. It's a the same picture with a number. Does that bother folks? Doesn't matter, because this deck is hard to find. Boop. The Fonte de Bastoni, this would be the page. The knight is a train. I wonder if this was pre-existing art that was repurposed for this deck. The queen and then the king is a gun. Hello. Uh, here's the ace of cups. Looks like Rhea Perlman. Uh, and we can skip through. It's the page. Knight on a motorcycle. Uh, queen. King is another gun, so I guess the kings are guns. Here's the ace of uh, spades, the ace of swords. What a mess I'm making, eh? Uh, so it looks like the pages are always a pipe. The knights are always some sort of transportation. The queen is always some kind of mask. And the king is a gun. And then we have dinere, or money, the, the, the coins. And so the, the, the ace is always a jester. And I will skip through. The page. Knight, queen, and king. So there you have it. There's a deck that's really not seen very often. It is Tarocco della Calazzoni, uh, Il Menegello. Uh, Osvaldo Menegazzi is created as the, or credited as the creator. There is a little uh, pamphlet, but it's in Italian, so I can't help with that. So there we go, sort of a, a, a salad, a smattering, a soupçon of out-of-print decks for your viewing enjoyment. I hope this was fun. These videos are, you know, I, my channel, I always think, oh, it's really about entertainment, but I find it really relaxing after a long day to sort of sit and make a video like this, so I hope it was fun for you. I will talk to you soon, and I hope you're well. Be good.